to come in the morning and to hear, nothing needs to change. It brings an immediate relief. Even if after a second we think, okay, we have many, many things to change. <laughs> but just to have that um, invitation to, to completely relax and to rest as open intelligence, to rest as you are, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I try to change many things. <laughs> you know, basically everything that appeared. <laughs> I had lots of comments about many people. Some of them were good, positive ones. Uh, so, you know, I was not a bad person, but still I, had, uh, I was very exhausted in trying to change uh, what appeared in my life. And I, I wasn't even aware of that until I came to this teaching. And um, the example of waking up in the morning, I mean, did everyone have the best thought this morning of, wow, I really want to come here, it's just amazing, everything is blissful. Did you have that, all of you? <laughs> Some of us, I mean, I have that, I'm really happy to come. But you know, we <laughs> it's true, but it's not like every morning, it's uh, uh, every moment is, uh, every morning and every moment is so different and you can even look at your own experience now to see if it's like that or not, right? We wake up in the morning and we have a sense of guilt or a sense of disappointment or depression. And okay, I'm gonna leave my relationship, you know, I need to change myself or I'm not good enough. I'm not, I will never be good enough. Um, I, I miss my family or why I'm not with them or I love being here. So it's always so, it's, it's changing all the time. And for me, you know, when Candy said this morning, what's looking, <laughs> nothing needs to change. It, it just reminded me how I always looked before. I looked in the data. Data is actually everything that we perceive. It's our thoughts emotions, sensations, experiences, <coughs> places, things, memories, past, present, future. So I looked at all of this data. And when I came to the first meeting, I, I was given an introduction to open intelligence, introduction to the nature of <coughs> mind. And it was, uh, it, it, in an instant, it was just amazing. Uh, we can do it right now. I stop thinking for a moment. Just stop thinking for a moment and recognize what remains. What remains when we stop thinking? There is alertness, clarity, cognizance, the power to know, the power to know everything. Right? It's open intelligence. And after that moment, even if it was very short or, or longer, it doesn't matter, even if it was very brief, data come along. But that's too open intelligence. This data, the inseparable from open intelligence, like the color blue in the sky, right? They're inseparable, the color blue and the sky, if they're not two, they're inseparable. And the, the source of everything that appears is open intelligence. Like the source of the stars is the space of the sky, right? That's a so beautiful metaphor. So for me, it was um, um, immediate just relief to hear that and deepen that recognition with the practice that we have here, which calls short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times until it becomes spontaneous, continuous, and you can take it with you everywhere you are. You can, um, a short moment of recognizing what is at the basis of everything. A short moment where you rest naturally with everything that comes up, um, allowing everything to be as it is. A short moment of not describing. A short moment of completely relaxing body and mind. Um, natural rest, resting naturally. I love to hear that from the beginning in the open meeting, rest naturally as you are. 
was like, wow, this is so good. Because I didn't rest naturally. <laughs> I, was, um, I was automatically changing everything that appeared for me. And not only myself, so the same thing was changing myself and trying to change other people too. You know, what people think about me. How can I change what people think about me? Maybe I can appear different. Maybe I can say something nicer. Maybe I can do something good to so people love me. Uh, and uh, feeling so limited, <coughs> even if I did my best, you know, I couldn't do more than <laughs> what I knew, right? So it was um, a constant way of living that trying to change what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, and not really um, succeeding in that. <laughs> and trying to change my relationship, trying to change uh, the relationship with my family, my friends, and trying to change everything to positive. So I feel good. So that was an amazing example, like waking up in the morning and thinking, okay, I don't feel like coming here. Or, you know, I, I have a sense of guilt. So for me before it was just that, just seeing this data and, and not allowing that to be as it is. Actually, really digging, thinking, <laughs> why am I feeling like that? Something is the cause for that. Maybe it's my husband. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's, maybe my sister. Oh yeah, she told me, she texted me a while ago and it made me think of something. Or maybe it's me. Maybe it's the weather, you know. <laughs> maybe it's the breakfast, you know, so it's, there's so many options, maybe, <laughs> and it's really exhausting. And you know, sometimes it was uh, very real, like you, you said, I could really relate. Like it looked so real that I could taste it. You know, it, it, it caused an effect for sure. It happened to me, and that's why I'm feeling. And then it looked so real. I was looking at that so much. I didn't rest naturally. I didn't allow that to be as it is. So that was my way of uh, of. A my approach to life and then you know at the best I could change it to something positive which like um, you know everything that was my favorite everything has a good meaning I said to myself you know probably this experience will give me some kind of uh, good meaning in the future <laughs> you know good experience that was at best that I could carry on with my negativity and uh, because I held to an, an identity that I really try to be positive. And the relief for me to, to not even be positive, <laughs> not even trying to be positive, was uh, uh, an immediate, such an opening and so empowering for me in the 12 empowerments, you know, because up until then, I came to open meetings, I did uh, short moments of open intelligence, and I, I loved it, you know, I tested it a bit, like, okay, waking up in the morning, feeling like, oh, I'm not good enough, or I'm limited, and for some of us, it's very painful feeling, mm -hmm. you know, it's a feeling that we carry for many years, a story of our life, I'm like this, and no one can save me from that, and my heart is broken, and it's because this happened to me, and we can't really even the most soothing conversation <laughs> with someone can never take that away because it's our experience, it's our data streams. How do we deal with the, the data streams? So for me, the crucial really uh, shift that occurred in my life, it was 10 years ago, uh, doing the 12 empowerments and coming to know, really coming to know the nature of my mind, not in a you know, uh, spacious way, like the nature of my mind is all pure and good, we hear that, it's lovely, but then to have a direct introduction and training that instinctive recognition of that and looking at, not at the, <laughs> the data and how to fix them, but look at what's looking at open intelligence, rest as open intelligence. And suddenly I saw, wow, there's so many things I didn't even notice I'm avoiding avoiding thoughts and feelings that I thought were really bad, bad to feel. You know, like when we, we think, okay, we have a bad thought about someone and we immediately, wow, I can't believe I think that way. And it can come just like, 
you know, we don't know where it comes from. It just comes, right? And we feel, oh, I can't think that. You know, and we feel so bad. We feel a sense of guilt, and it's so strong. And then we try to change it. Maybe we read some things, or we, we take a... I don't know, we, we just buy something to someone or try to, to change the experience or, or cultivate some kind of compassion or trying to look at the positive side of the person, try to look at the positive side of ours or trying to justify that. So the 12 empowerments really allowed me to look at all the ways I've been handling with data. What exactly did I do when data came up? when I felt unsatisfied, when I felt I'm not doing good enough, when I, I felt I'm avoiding from some relationships in my life. Wow, I've been avoiding so many things. Really, I've been avoiding of, of life, really contributing to life. And I thought I'm doing really well. I thought I'm really doing well. And you know, it's not that my, my life before were, were bad. And, it, it w I had a beautiful life, and I have an amazing family. But the 12 empowerments, really, it's a, like a, taking a good look, a very powerful look at, at all the dynamics and really making a real change that comes from understanding the consequences of harming ourselves with the belief of data streams really thinking that data streams have power over us. And it can be anything, depression, hurt, um, jealousy, desire, fear. This data, I, I really believe that they controlled my life. And they did, because I emphasized them over and over again, and I had a good story for each really good story that everyone would believe me too. So not only myself, I made everyone else to believe me and feel sorry for me. <laughs> and I felt such a victim to such data. And I, 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 when I did the 12 empowerments, I, I felt such a compassion to, not only to myself, for, wow, I just believed in all these data streams. I didn't allow them to be there. And then I also, 12 empowerments, we do it in the group. It's, suddenly we see, wow, I'm not the only one. It brings a natural, spontaneous compassion and openness to the nature of our mind understanding. And it's really good to see the consequences because then we, we are so motivated to make a real change, to make a change in our relationship. And I felt so motivated and supported in the 12 empowerments. And since that, since that, that was 10 years ago, the conviction, the assurance in the power of open intelligence, in the practice, grows more and more. So it doesn't like s stays in what's looking and that's it, you know, looking at all of our experiences and our relationship. It's that inseparability of our own open intelligence with everything that comes up in our life and increasing stability increasing insight, clarity into the nature of everything, increasing love, understanding, um, understanding where people are coming from. You know, really saying that even if we have like, um, we think, oh, then they're fake. These people are fake. You know, we really believe that, emphasize that, oh, we really think it's true. We understand where it comes from because we believe this data too before. And I remember one uh, sentence in the, in the empowerment, it was, uh, if we had the same data, we would act in the same way, right? So it was that, uh, oh, again, the 12 empowerments allowed me to take responsibility for what I'm thinking and feeling. Not just to look at everything, but to really take responsibility one step at a time. And the support was amazing for me for that because I thought, oh, nothing need to change. I'm, I'm a positive person and then, wow. I, I realize, wow, there's so many things I really need to take responsibility for, and I'm, I, 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 I admit, you know, I want to be, I want to be honest and open, and and I'm so grateful for this teaching. The um, avoiding is is not is not anymore uh, uh, coming up for me. 
uh, I feel so supported in the training. It l sometimes it looks at the beginning where we think, okay, we are avoiding, we are not allowing things to be as they are. And then um, you can simply rest naturally as it is. That, that's the most gentle and powerful way, just to let that be as it is. And it just coming here, showing up, you know, making yourself available to, to open intelligence to that instinctive recognition. Now see, it's instinctive recognition. It's not something that, okay, what did you say before? Let's do one plus one. It's not like we need to think about it. <laughs> it's instinctive, it just like, and it was instinctive for me. It touched me somewhere to know that there is something about me that is totally relaxed and open and totally stable and powerful and beneficial, beneficial. Uh, true benefit. So the balance we offer the life of complete benefit uh, w without effort, a natural way of being. It's natural for all of us.